Good afternoon, everybody. We're in Gemara Shabbos on the bottom of Daf Yud Beis Amit Beis. Today we're going to learn Daf Yud Gimel Yud Hashem. It's a beautiful Daf, not a difficult Gemara today. Let me just mention before we begin that in this time period to learn Taira, to keep up with the with the blot uh, that you're learning every day, and to keep up with any Shiri Taira, to invite other people to join to learn Taira is the way to go. It's the way to bring protection for yourself, for your family. You know, the Gemara says in Baba Basra regarding Taira, Ani Chaymazu Taira, that a person that learns Taira is protected by a wall around him. So when you learn Taira, you're bringing protection for yourself, for your family, and the greatest Yeshua comes through learning Taira. Let me just mention what we learned yesterday. We learned in the Gemara yesterday about the Ashkach Pratis here, that uh, there are unfortunately people that need a Rafur Shalema. And the Gemara yesterday spoke about the fact that the Shechina is at the head of the Chayla. And the Shechina supports a Chayla, the Shechina feeds a Chayla. So all those that need a Rafur Shalema, the Abish should give them the biggest Rafur, a quick Rafur, and all others should remain safe and sound and every, everybody. As we learned yesterday, to include ourselves together with all the Chal Yisrael, should see a Rafur and the ultimate Yeshua with the coming of Mashiach. So let's get right into the Gemara. We're at the bottom, towards the bottom of Yud Beis, Amud Beis, two lines from the bottom. The Gemara here quotes from the Mishnah. So the statement that it said in the Mishnah was that a chazan is roya heichanatinoikis kairin. He sees where the children are reading. But he should not read. So the Gemara is going to clarify the pshat of this statement. In the beginning of the statement, you say roya that a chazan can look into the sefer together with the children. Seemingly, that means my love, likrois, that he reads along with them. <clears throat> and then what does it say afterwards? That he should not read. So what does it mean that he sees with them, which l'chayra sounds like he reads with them, and then it says he should not read with them. And for the Gemara, loy. That's not what it means when it says that he's roya, that he looks with them. He only looks to see the beginning of the parsha, and as Rashi explains over here, that he wants to see the beginning of the parsha to prepare the alias for the next day. The way it was on Mulligan Saitan was when people got alias, the person that got the aliyah was the one that read from the Taita. So the Chazan, though, would support them. He would give them what's called today Untezogen. He would uh, say the taimim, the trap, or the right pronunciation of the words. So he would have to prepare a little bit in the beginning to get the person that gets, has the aliyah started. From here we see, it. I mean, Rashi clearly says, That's the untazogen, that he would stand there and quietly say the right nukudais and the right taimim to get him started. But we see from here the importance of uh, reading from the Torah with the right pronunciation and with the right taimim. Befrat minik chabad is to be very medayik and very makbit to have the right taimim amikra. Uh, something that were very medayik and so much so, I once saw somewhere that the Rebbe Maharash, if uh, someone read a posik and he didn't read with the right taimim, he would make him read the whole posik over again, even if he just missed one trop. That's Pachlal not the halacha, but it was very, very medayik that it should be with the right trap. Behind you, still confused the term. Yeah, right. unfortunately, correct. The Sanusha, there should be a schus while we're talking about this, that David should give us back the ability to be able to enter into the shuls and read from the Taita again. Zakti Gemara Vaiter, Vechein Omer Rabba Bashmul, Avul Mesader Hu Rashi Parshi Yosov, that the Chazan may, to the light of the lamp, prepare the beginning of the Parshas. Now the Gemara asks, Kula, Parsha, Loi, you may not read from the light of the lamp the entire Parsha? Meisvei, on Dafyud Gimel, the question was asked from the following, Braise, Rab Shimon, Begam Lealoimer, Hatinoike, Shal Beis Rabon, the children, Hoyu Mesader and Parsha Yosef, they were Mesader the Parshas, Vikoyrin, and they would read from the Parshas, Loi Raneir, to the light of the candle. So we see that the children are reading from the light of the candle. How, how are you reading from, reading from the light of the candle on Shabbos? So Taisvis here points out <coughs> that really the Gemara should have asked this question on the Mishnah itself. It says in the Mishnah that the children are reading the parshas to the light of the candle and the Chazan comes and he could look and see in the beginning and the end. 
What's going on over here? Why are the children reading in the Mishnah from the light of the candle? So Taisu says, in the Mishnah, it's possible that the children did it on their own and they didn't ask any questions. And the halacha may be that if a child does it on his own, even though it's forbidden, but we don't have to be meichet, you could allow him to do it. But that's in the Mishnah. But over here in the Braise, it's not stating a fact of a story that happened. It's telling you a din. It's telling you a fact that they may go ahead and read from the Oiraner. So the Gemara is going to give three answers to this. Or two answers to this. Ibai <clears throat> say one answer is. Rashi Parsha The children will taka, read only from the beginning of the Parsha. They wouldn't read the whole thing. Just like we're saying regarding the person preparing that he only looks at the beginning, so too the children were also only looking at the beginning to see the alias of what they're going to be reading the next day. You boys say, man, another answer. Shani Tinaikis. Children are different. Children are allowed to read to the light of a lamp. Since the fear of their teacher is upon them, they're not going to come to stick out their hand and fix the lamp to make it that it should be good. They're, they're, they're afraid of their teacher. So children are allowed. That's the shot that it says in our Gemara. If you look at Rav Nisim Goin, Rav Nisim Goin, interestingly, it brings from uh, the Yerushalmi a third pshat. He says when it comes to children, they're not going to fix the lamp. If they're going to see that the lamp is about to go out, and they can finish learning and go out to play, they're going to let the lamp extinguish and leave. They're not going to try to fix the lamp to continue learning. They're happy to stop learning and continue going. That's for children, therefore it's mutter. For adults though, an adult wants to learn more teta, to add to learn more teta, so therefore he's not allowed. It said in the Mishnah that a zov should not eat together with a zova on the same table. Tanya, Rab Shimon, Ben Alaza Oimer, Bo Yurei, come and see Ad Heichom Porza Tare Bisrol. How widespread Tare purity is amongst Yidin. This refers to the fact that Yidin were very careful. I'm sorry about the background noise. Hopefully, it'll subside in a moment. Let's continue the Gemara inside. Let's see how uh, much, how widespread Tare, referring to the fact that Yidin eat even Chulin. Betara, not together with somebody that's impure. How widespread this was amongst Yidin. Why? Where do we see this? Here, in this Mishnah. Shaloi Shaninu, it does not say in the Mishnah, A person that's Tohoir should not eat with a Tmeya, with a woman that's Tomei. The same din of the Mishnah would apply, not only in a case where the man is a Zav and the woman is a Zava, but the same din should also apply in a case where the woman is a Zava and the man is completely Tohoir. Didn't say that in the Mishnah. Because that's a case where the man being Tohoir and the woman being Tomei, he will not eat together with the woman. El, or rather, what does it say? Lo yoichal hazov im hazovom aveda. The only thing it says is that the Zov should not eat together with the Zov when they're both Tomei because this could bring to an Aveda. Then Braise there continues and says a similar din. A zav which is a parush, referring to a person that's careful with all the halachis, should not eat together with a zav that's an amanaretz. Why not? Shema yagilenu etzlei, because he may be accustomed to being by him. Till there's the Braise. What's the problem if a Zav, which is a Parush, eats together with a Zav that's an Amaretz? Elo, rather, we have to read the Braise differently. Eating together with the Zav and Amaretz, he might give you to eat food which is Tommy. And what's the issue with that? Azov, while he himself is Tomei, even though he's always careful not to eat Tomei food, but when he himself is Tomei, doesn't he eat Tomei food? So why can't he eat together with the Zav, which is an Amanoritz? Amar Abaye, Gzeire, the Gzeire is as follows. Shema yachilenu dvarim she'enan misukonen. He may give him to eat foods which the Meiser was not taken properly. That's the issue. 
Rav Omar, Rav says, no, that's not the issue. Roi v'amayaretz ma'isren hen. Even though there was a gzayre they made in Amayaretz, there's a concept of d'may because there's a minority of Amayaretzim that don't take ma'isr, but Roi v'amayaretzim do take ma'isr. So that's not the concern. El, or rather, what is the concern? Shema yehei rogel etzloi. You may become accustomed to eating together with this zav, which is tamay. And you may go and continue joining him in a meal even when you are tahir and he'll give you to eat food which is tame. So we have two pshatim of why a zav parush should not eat with a zav amaretz. Abayah says because he might give you to eat from maisa, from food that maisa was not taken. And Rava says because you may continue joining him with a meal even after you become tahir. So the following question was asked. Nida, a woman which is a Nida. Mao Shatishan in Bailo. Is she allowed to sleep in the same bed together with her husband? He be big doy if he's wearing his own clothing, vuhu be big She's that is he she he be big she's wearing her own clothing, vuhu be big and he is wearing his clothing. So is this enough of a separation? The fact that they're making a change in this sense that each one is wearing their own garment, unlike usually that not necessarily each one was wearing their own garment, are they allowed to sleep in the same bed when they are in, when she's in Nida? Omar Rav Yasef, so Rav Yasef brings a ray from eating milk and meat, or not exactly meat, eating chicken and milk on the same table. Tarshama, we learned in Abraisa. Ha'oif oile emagvina ala shulchan. The chicken that you eat could be brought on the same table as cheese. As we know, the oif <coughs> together with gvina is only a isra mid rabbanon. Menatayre, the isra of basa b'chalav is only meat, that beef that comes from an animal. So it's a lot to go on the same table. Ve'einoi nechal. And it cannot be eaten together. That's the Xayda and the not to eat them together, but it could be on the same table. Divrei Beishama. Beisil Oloimer. Beisil says, and here Beisil is more machmer than Beishama. Loyoyle v'loy nechal. It shouldn't go up on the same table, and it also shouldn't be eaten on the same table. So the Gemara is bringing a raya, just like when it comes to eating the milk and the chicken, you don't want to bring it on the same table. The same applies to a nido, where he may, whom we may not have any relations with her. You don't want her in the same bed as you. And for the Gemara, it's not the same. Shani hasam delekedeis. In the case of a person eating chicken and, and the, the, this cheese and chicken on the same table, there are no two people that could remind each other. Over here though, the husband and wife, they'll remind each other. And this makes sense. When there are two people and they remind each other, it's different. Because it says in the safe of this verse, If you have two people that are guests, they are allowed to eat on the same table. And one can eat meat, and the other eats cheese. And they're not chayshish. So, assumably, what's the reason we're not chayshish? Because they'll remind each other. So the Gemara says, no, that's not the case. Did we not learn on this b'raise? This din that they're allowed to eat on the same table, milk and meat, is only if they don't know one another. So they're not going to come to mix the foods. If they do know each other, as soon as it's forbidden. Nami here, husband and wife, Makirin Zeze, Ninu. They, uh, of course, know each other, so therefore, how could they go into the same bed? We see that reminding one another is not enough. Dr. Gemara, no, but it's still not the same. Hochi hashte, what kind of a comparison? Hosom, in the case of two people eating milk and meat by the same table, Deis Ike, there are two people that are eating at the same table, Shini Leke. But there's no sign being made at the table to distinguish, to separate between the milk and the meat. Ha ha, here, Ikedeis, there are two people, there's the husband and the wife, and Ve'ekeshinui. There's also a change that they're making. Hu be big doi, vihi be big do. Each one is wearing a separate garment to separate from each other. So you have two reminders over here. Ike the Omri, others said the raya from the Braise as follows. Basically the same raya like the Gemara said till here, but it started from the Seifa. Two people that are guests are allowed to eat milk and meat on the same table. And we learned on this. 
This wasn't said only in a case when they don't know each other. If they do know each other, also it's forbidden. The Hani Nami, here as well, a, wife, a, a husband with his wife that's a Nida in the same bed. Nami Makirin Zeze, they know one another, Ninu, and we should say that the same Isser applies. And for the Gemara, like we said before, there's a difference. Hasam deyiseke. In the case of milk and, and, and meat on the same table, there are two people that could remind each other. But shini leke. There's no sign to remind, to make a separation. Hacha ike deyis. There are two people, veke shinoi. And there's also the change that each one is wearing a separate garment. So we have no rai from this braise. Now the Gemara brings the Mishnah, Toshimah the Mishnah said, Lo yoichel azovim azovo, azov should not eat on the same table with azovo, mishum hergel aveda, because he's going to come to do an aveda with her. So we see right over here, they shouldn't eat on the same table, because they may come to do an aveda. For sure they shouldn't be in the same bed together, a husband and his wife, which is a nidah. And, and for the Gemara, no, it's not I from there. Again, the same answer. Ha chanami, deis ike. In the case with the Zav and the Zav are eating together on the same table, they are two people, but they haven't made any sign to remind each other to separate. Shinu there's no sign that they made to separate. Whereas with Anida sleeping in the same bed as her husband, besides the fact that it's two people, if they're wearing separate garments, they did make a sign to remind each other that tonight is different. Toshima, the Gemara brings a third raya. The Pasuk in Yechesko says, it's talking about Sadiqim there. And it says, He doesn't eat from the mountains. Rashi says, what this means is, he doesn't get his parnasa in the zuchos of the harem, in the zuchos of the avais. He has his own zuchos that he gets his parnasa from. The Ein of Leinasa Galulei Beis Yisrael, and he doesn't lift up his eyes to see Davei Dezara amongst Yidin. And he never had any relation or even any yichod with a strange woman. And he doesn't get close to his wife, which is a nida. We compare a woman which is a nida to a woman that's, that's someone else's wife. Just like someone else's wife, if you sleep with her in the same bed, even if she's in her own garment and you're in your own garment, it's forbidden. The same is also with Anido, with whom it's forbidden that you should have any relations with. Even if he wears his garment and she wears her, her, her garment, also it's still forbidden. No, this is a conclusive proof to this, that by a wife that's Anido, she may not sleep in the same bed as you, even if she's wearing her own garment. This conclusion here is arguing on what Rav Pedas said. When it asked a, the relation between a husband and his wife, Anida, only made forbidden the actual relation. So only erva. erva when there's an actual relation, then that's also Not more than that. But of course, we don't paskin like this. We paskin like the conclusion of the Gemara of Rabbi Yosef that brought a raya that a woman, a nida, may not be in the same bed as her husband. So since we mentioned about a, 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 a husband not coming close to his wife, a nida, the Gemara now talks also about other arayas. I mean, Bechlal, the same halacha applies to any arayas, that a person may not have any relation not even come close to kiss or to hug or to come close to any of that ayas. But the Gemara here will bring a story of an Amaira with his sisters that there is a, a hetter for him to, to kiss his sister. When Ola came home from the house of learning Teireh, he would kiss his sisters on their bosoms and others say on their hands. So regarding this, there is no chumrah, there's no, uh, the, you're, you're allowed. All right, this, as it says in Paiskim, there's a, a father to a child, a grandfather to a granddaughter in most cases, um, brothers and sisters, like we see right over here, is allowed. Now the Gemara says, Upligge didei adidei. Ola is arguing on another statement that he himself said. The Amma Ola, Ola himself said, I feel a shum kurva aser. Any closeness is forbidden. Any of the Arayas. And of course, a brother to a sister is one of the Arayas. So any closeness is forbidden. Mishum, 
we tell a Nazir, go away, go away from coming close to an area that uh, he can get tome or get close to something which he's not allowed to have as a Nazir. Go around a vineyard and don't walk through, don't get close to a vineyard so you shouldn't come to eat any grapes or wine from a vineyard. So we see that by a Nazir, he was very careful with this and the same with any of the other Arayas, he said that you should be careful with this. So Taisus over here says that even though Ula himself said this, however, Ula himself was sure that regarding himself he had no Yetzirah for this and therefore he kissed his sisters when he came home because he was absolutely sure that it would not affect him whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, let me just mention an interesting thing. The Rebbe brings this Gemara in a Sikha in a very interesting context. The Rebbe says from this Gemara you see that when you talk about a kiss, there are two types of kisses. And the Rebbe there is actually talking about how we find in Nach and the different places in Chazal that a kiss is used as a metaphor for the relationship between Yidin and Eibishter. And the Rebbe explains there in the Sikha that there's two kinds of kisses. There's a kiss which is coming from a very, very deep expression of love. A person has such a deep feeling of love that he can't articulate it in words and it comes out with a kiss. Then you have another kiss, which is not necessarily a deep outpouring of love. It's just a sign of connection, a sign of relationship. So the Rebbe says over here in this Gemara, when Ola kissed his sisters, it was just a sign of closeness. This is my sister and he's coming home after being away for a long, for a long period of time. So he kissed them just as a sign of brotherlyhood, sisterhood, closeness, but not uh, a kind of kiss which comes out of an outpouring of love that comes out in the kiss. That's what this Gemara is talking about here. Tana de Beelio, we learned in Tana de Beelio the following story. There was a story with a Talmud that learned a lot of Tereshu Balpeh. And he learned a lot of Tereshu Bixav. And he also learned Gemara, as we already learned this in, in Gemara Brachas a few times. Shimish Tamid Chachamim means to discuss the discussions of the Tamid Chachamim in Gemara. Umeis Bechatsi Yomov passed away more before half of his life was taken away from him. She would, his wife would walk around with his tefillin, she would go from one Beisach Knesset to another Beisach Midrash, showing everybody her husband's tefillin. And she says, Who, look, these are my husband's tefillin, they cannot wear them anymore. And Ksiv B'Tayre, in the Tayre it says, Ki hu yamecha. The Tayre is your life and the length of your days. Baili, Shoshana Harbe, Vekara Harbe, my husband that learned Tayre Shabbat Peh, and he learned a lot of Tayre Shabbat Peh, Vishimish Tomei Dechachamim, and he also learned Gemara Harbe. Mipnei Ma Meis Machatzi Yomov, why did he die so young? V'loi Hoya Oda Machzira, there was nobody that knew what to answer her. V'loi Hoya Oda Machzira Dovar. Pamachas, one time, Nis Arachti Etzlo, Eliyahu, possibly this refers to Eliyahu Anovi, the Tana de Beliyo, Eliyahu Anovi was a guest by her. She told her again the whole her sob story, how her husband passed away young. And Eliyahu said to her, Biti, my daughter, be many duscha, and the times when you were a nida, Mahu Etzlacha, what kind of a relation did he have with you? Amr Ali, so she responded to him and said, Chas v'shalem, God forbid, nothing at all. I feel a bit, even with a small finger, he didn't touch me. He asked her weiter, Bimeili bunech, in the times when you wear white garments, which is a later period after the times of Nida, those are the first seven days, and the time following after that is called Meili bunach, when you still wear white garments. Ma'u etzlacha, what, what kind of relation did he have then with you? So here she answered, Ochalimi, Shasaimi, he ate with me, he drank with me, Yoshanimi, he slept with me, Bikir of Basar, even together, even without in one garment. But also Daite Al Since this is still a time period that they're not allowed to have any relations, he had no thought Bakhlal, no idea Bakhlal to have any relations. That this is what she told him. Vamarti law. So I said to her, if so, Baracham Makim Shahargai, thank Hashem that he took away his life to atone for such a kind of Aveda. Shalai Nasa Panam Bitaira, because he didn't follow what it says in the Taira. Share Yomra Taira Val Isha bin Nidas to Masa Lai Sikrav. And Lai Sikrav means not to come close, to be in the same bed together, which includes in the days of the Nida and also the following days before she becomes tired. He's not allowed to come close together. So he made a mistake in this Allah. So the Abishur took away his life. 
Big Pella, this story. A big Pella, because we're talking over here about a Talmud, the Gemara calls him a Talmud. Chacham, he learned, he learned Gemara, he learned Mishnais. How did he make a mistake with something like this? Taisus over here asks this question, and Taisus makes a cheshbin. It must be that it was a different kind of a case where the whole iser between him and his wife was an iser midrabanon. And he thought that in a time when there's an iser midrabanon, you don't make a gzeda l'gzeda, and therefore he's allowed to be together with his wife in the same bed. But it can't be talking about a time when there was an iser midrabanon. He would have never made such a mistake. They were in the same bed. There was a small separation between him and her, a sinner, which is a sort of rash over here, uh, says sort of short pants that she wore to separate between him and her. But other than that, there was no separation, and that was the reason why the Abisha took, took away his life early. Okay, this is the end of the Gemara on the previous Mishnah. Zog de Mishnah ve'elu min ha'alochais, and these are the halochais. Sh'omru ba'aliyas Chananye ben Chizkiye ben Gorin. That was said in the attic of Chananye ben Chizkiye ben Gorin, sh'olu levakre, when they entered to visit him. There were many people that came up to visit him. We'll see soon in the Gemara what Chananye ben Chizkiye was doing in the attic, and then many people came to visit him. And at that time period, there were more from the Talmidei Beishamai than Talmidei Beishilil, which was unusual. But that Akhlal, Talmidei Beishilil were more, and we passed him like Beishilil. But over here, there were more Talmidei Beishamai than Talmidei Beishilil. The Yud Ches Dvarim Gazru Baybayayim. There are 18 things that they decreed on that day, which the Gemara will explain what they are. What is the right version in the Mishnah? Eilutnan. Do you read the Mishnah Eilu without a Vav? Oi Ve'elutnan. Or do you read the Mishnah Ve'elu with a Vav? Ve'elutnan. Do you read it with a Vav? Hani de Amaran. It's connected also to the Xadis that were already mentioned in the previous Mishnah. They are part of the Xadis that were made then in that time. Oi Eilutnan. Or you read Eilu referring to what's going to follow later. The Be'inan Lameima Kaman that we're going to say later, not going back, not including what it said before. You have a similar thing Taisis brings over here in the beginning of uh, Parashas Mishpatim. Rashi brings it. Ve'ele is Maisaf al and Eile is Pasal as Rishainim. So over here as well, the question is how to read this Mishnah. Eilu or Ve'elu? Toshema, the Gemara brings a Braisa that was quoted already earlier in the Gemara. Eim la ner, you don't take the lice off of a garment to the light of a lamp. Ve'en koirin la ner, you don't read on Shabbos to the light of a lamp. And then that Brai concludes, the Eilu min ha'halachis she'omru ba'aliyas Hananya ben Chizkiya ben Gorin. And these are from the halachas that were said in the attic by Hananya ben Chizkiya ben Gorin. Shema mino ve'elutnan. So I see that you have to say ve'elu because two of the takanas that were mentioned earlier is part of the takanas that were made in this attic. So there's two from before and another 16 that will follow later, as we'll see. Shema mino. Since we're talking about Hananiah ben Chizkiah, so the Gemara is going to tell us who this Hananiah ben Chizkiah was. What's something unique that he did? Mi Kasav Megillas Tainus. Who is the individual that wrote Megillas Tainus? Megillas Tainus was a scroll that was written in it all the dates that you're not allowed to fast on that day. Uh, all the special days when there was something unique and special that Yeshua Simcha that happened to Klal Yisrael on that date and you're not allowed to fast on that day. So who wrote this Megillus Tainus? Omar Omru they said Hananye ben Chizkiah v'siyatoi it was Hananye and Chizkiah and his group of friends Shoi Mechave v'nes HaTzorais they cherished the Tzorais that Hashem brought upon Klal Yisrael and Rashi explains what this means is they were mechavev the redemption and the salvation that the Eibishter brought to Yidin in the matzav of the Tzadis. Yeah, that's the Pshat in the Gemara according to Rashi. Mechavev in, uh, and therefore on those days you're not allowed to fast. The Masha, however, asks on Rashi, why does the Gemara use such a lotion? Mechavev in Esa Tzadis. Why not Mechavev in Esa Nisim, Mechavev in Esa Gulis? So the Masha actually says, Mechavim and Esatzadis means that they actually also appreciated and loved the Tzadis themselves, realizing that whatever Tzadis there is, the Abish is bringing it and the Abish is involved in it. 
That's what like we learned in the Gemara and Brachas. The Masha quotes it here. Kshem shemavarach ala teve, kach mavarach ala ra. Realizing that when you're in a matzav of a tzara, the Eibush is present, and actually the Eibush is even more present in the tzara than any other time. As the Altareb explains in Tanya, we spoke about it then, that something that comes in a way that's concealed and we don't understand Hashem's ways, like what's going on now in the world, when the whole world is shutting down and we don't understand what's, what, what's Vilde Ebeshte, what's happening over here. So instead of looking at it and saying that Ebeshte Chas V'Shalem is concealing himself, removing himself, and so on, Adarabe, it's the Ebesh is actually more involved. He's, it's coming from a hidden place. It's coming from Alma de Iskassia. There's a hidden goodness that's here that we can't see. It's not only less of involvement, it's more of an involvement. So, Mechav and Esatzaris means that when the Geula happened, they were able to see the goodness that there was even in the Tzara itself. And even before the Geula happened, in, inside the Tzara itself, they were able to appreciate the Abish's presence and know that it's ultimately good in all of that negativity. That's why the Gemara uses this expression. We also cherish these time periods of Tzaris and of the redemptions as well. What should we do? If we're going to come and write all those dates that Ebeshter has brought us salvation, we won't have enough uh, enough. This is constantly, it's, it's so constant, every, every other day the Abisha brings the Yeshua of Akal Yisrael. So, so therefore we, don't, we can't write it down and then you're going to say that you can never fast. another pshat. Ein shaita nifka. A shaita does not get harmed. Meaning, a shaita, just like if you harm him, he doesn't realize that you harmed him. So too, we do not have the sensitivity to realize the tzaras that we're in and to realize the great salvation that Hashem brings upon us. We don't have that sensitivity to realize this. The way Hanan Yeb and Chizkiah in his time period realized and appreciated what the Ebeshter was doing for them. Dover Acher, Eim Besar Hames Margish Beizmal. If you have the, the, the flesh of a dead body, he does not feel the pain even if you put a sharp thing to the, of a sharp, from a sharp knife to the body. He doesn't feel it. And so too, we don't have that sensitivity to feel. But the Gemara immediately questions this example. Aini, is this true? Ve ha'amar Rav Yitzchak. Rav Yitzchak said, and we learned this in the Gemara of Brachas. Kasha rima lemeis kemachat bebasar achai. The worms that eat the flesh of a dead body is so painful for the dead body, for the person, like putting, sticking a needle into the flesh of the living, of living body. Shanamar, it says regarding a dead person, Ach Besaray Olav Yichav, his flesh is painful, Vinafshi Olav Soival, and he mourns in his soul, referring to a person even after he passes away. So we can't use this example that we don't have the sensitivity from a person after he passed away. Aim, uh, rather, the example is different. Aim Besara Meis Shebechai, if a person has dead piece of flesh there in his body, which has no feelings, so, Margish be Ismail, that area where he has a dead piece of flesh, he doesn't feel anything that you do and you cut or you, you, with a pin or whatever it is in that area. And so too, we today don't have the sensitivity to feel and realize the Tzadis and the greatness and the Yeshua that the Ebesha does for us. Now, another thing regarding Tchanan Yeb and here we'll, here we'll see what was he doing in this attic. Now this man is remembered for the for, for good. Who is this? His name is Hanan Yeben Chizkiah. If not for him, Nignas Seifi Yecheskel. Seifi Yecheskel from, from Nach would have been hidden. Why? Because there are things that are written in Sefi Yecheskel that seem to contradict what it says in Taira. Ma'asa, what did he do? Heloloi Gimomeis Garbishem, and they brought 300 barrels of oil to prepare for him to have for food or to have for the candles that he needed to light. And he was there, Yoshev Balia. He sat in an attic, the darshan, and he darshaned all the psukim that they shouldn't be a contradiction to what it says in the Torah. Now she brings one example. Where do you, where is there a pasuk which seems to be a contradiction to what it says in the Torah? So there's a pasuk in Yechesko where it says nevela treifa la yechlo akainim. Kainim shouldn't eat nevela treifa, which seems to imply that a Yisrael could eat nevela treifa. How could you say that? 
So he darshaned it, Rashi brings a drasha from the Gemara in Menachis. The Gemara says, because in the base of Mikdash, by a oif, there's malike, where you chop off the head from the back, which is not a regular shechita, and that's permitted to eat because it's done in the base of Mikdash for that carbon. It's permitted, so therefore the Gemara had to clarify only when it's done with the carbon and not otherwise a kain may not eat it. So it has to have an extra clarification for the kain. Otherwise, it's poshit that no, no of Klal Yisrael are allowed to eat the Trefe. So that's seemingly what Machanani ben Chizkiya was doing in the attic when the Mishnah says, Sha'amru ve'elu min ha'halacha, Sha'amru ba'aliyas, Chanani ben Chizkiya ben Gari, when he was in the attic and they came to visit him. Yeah, so here we see there's also sometimes when a person has to uh, clarify something, get something done, you quarantine yourself, you isolate yourself, you have a project that you have to do, so you have peace and quiet, you're able to get it done without any disturbances. So in this time period when many people are sitting at home alone, I don't know if they're alone actually, many people are with many, many children in the house and have to homeschool their children, so it's uh, not so easy to have peace of mind for yourself, but for, for whoever has some peace of mind for himself to be able to learn extra, take upon himself some projects to, to clarify certain things, to go through a sugya, whatever it is, to add more tight. It's definitely a time period sitting at home to say more tilim, to add more tztake, to add more in tayda, to bring the, the great Yeshua for Klal Yisrael that we're all waiting for, the ultimate goal to see the Rebbe come down and take us out of Golas. Take it from Yad Mamish. To see you again tomorrow, Mitzvah